So you're saying Meghan Markle is controlling and deliberately tries to isolate Harry from his friends. That's, is that what they call coercive behaviour? Potentially. I, I mean, Potentially. Look, Drop the potentials, I, Hannah. I, I... Hello and welcome to the Showbiz Showdown with me, JJ and this Yobi. This is still the only show on all of Talk TV where we take on the world of entertainment in the way that only Talk TV can. Now, today's big question. Have Harry and Meghan fallen out with Victoria and David Beckham? On one hand, you have actual British royalty. And on the other side, you've got Harry and Meghan. Hey, see what I did there? Uh, join me in the studio, one of the greatest showbiz journalists of our time, Miss Hannah Hope. Hannah, how are you doing? Yeah, good, thank you. Nice to see you. You too. Let's go through this from, let's start at the beginning. So Meghan and Victoria met back in 2013. Meghan got a dress, I think, from Victoria's collection and wore it to some gala and they became mates. David and Harry have been mates for years, like 20 odd years. They've done charity stuff together. Um, they've parted together. Fast forward to 2017. Somehow the Beckhams are now involved with helping Meghan do these secret dates with Harry. And it's all going very well. And when Meghan's over in California, she's staying with them and stuff and they're helping her out. And then Meghan starts getting paranoid, apparently, and says that she thinks the Beckhams have been spelling secrets to the press about Harry and Meghan. Well, the, the, yes, the, the, you're right. You are right. So uh, actually, um, Harry has been closer to uh, Victoria even longer than David oh, wow. because when she was a Spice Girl, she uh, used to always take them to concerts. They went to go and see Spice World as kids. So he's really, yeah. she really is part of their family. Um, and I think that you're absolutely right. I think that when um, a controlling person wants to isolate, uh, are you calling their, Meghan Markle controlling? Potentially, but when a when a controlling person wants to isolate isolate their other half they start to section off all the other people who are close to them or maybe who haven't been handpicked by them and I think that uh, Megan sees that Victoria and David are very much part of the old guard so she was wanting to schmooze Victoria and David when she was getting in there and working her way up but now they're no longer useful to her I actually think that uh, she's ready to uh, cut ties and the other thing I also think is that now Harry and Megan are really a brand brand Beckham is actually competition for them in America. So you're saying Meghan Markle is controlling and deliberately tries to isolate Harry from his friends. That's, is that what they call coercive behaviour? Potentially. I, I mean, Potentially. Look, drop the potentials, I, I, I mean, I'm a showbiz journalist. I'm not a psychologist. <laughs> so uh, I, all these big kind of psychobabble words, I'm not <laughs> totally au okay with. But I do think that if you look at the pattern, Harry's old school friends from Eton, Harry's close relationship with his brother, you know, all of these big relationships in his family, his father. And uh, Meghan has actually isolated them all out. Uh, so everyone who, who is a threat to her is in the firing line. Do you think it's Megan's isolating them or is it that Harry now sees them differently? Because his friends, I heard that his friends were making some jokes that were crass, sexist, racist, and Megan said, that's not cool. I don't want to be, I don't want you hanging around with these people. So maybe he's just doing the right thing now? Yeah, that, that, that's potentially true. I mean, he, do, he did go to like, you know, one of those posh boys schools where they where that kind of humour that I don't find very funny, but, uh, <laughs> it, you know, does go down. So potentially, yeah, she could have been like, you know, I, I don't really like the people you're hanging out with. But I don't think that Victoria and, Be Victoria and David Beckham are those people. I don't mm -hmm. think that Prince William and uh, Prince Charles are those people. So I, I just, I do wonder what her intentions are. And I also think that um, it was very telling that um, with um, David launching his new football team in Miami, mm -hmm. we haven't seen anything of Harry and Meghan there when all, everyone else has been coming out to support them. Well, Harry was just there the other day, right? He was just there the other day, but without Meghan. Without Meghan. Without Meghan, which is telling, because Meghan's been out a lot lately. We, have, we basically haven't seen her for ages, and then she's been at two Beyonce concerts. <laughs> Who wants to see Beyonce more than once? I don't know. <laughs> and Taylor Swift recently as well. And again, I don't want to go and see Taylor Swift, very, um, to be honest. But they're out a, a lot. Do you think this beef, if there is a beef, has anything to do with the fact that Harry and Meghan invited David to the Invictus Games when it was in 
Australia. In Australia. Yeah. Yes, I mean that. And that, Beckham attended, but didn't get to actually see Harry. Yeah, that, that quite a lot. Tom Bauer um, has written quite a lot about this. So usually, um, you know, Beckham's flown halfway around the world. Usually, Prince William would actually, Prince Harry, sorry, would actually go and greet him and and you know sort of say thank you for making the effort, mate. Yeah. But he was just met by officials and and was largely ignored and and actually was completely kept away from Meghan uh, and Harry. And I think that the, the idea behind that is potentially. Uh, Beckham would have stolen some of her limelight and this was when she wasn't having the best time on the tour with the royal family uh, so I, I don't know I, I, this is this is what people are saying who are close to them yeah and also in 2018 um, Harry and Meghan decided not to invite the Beckhams to their wedding dinner but they invited them to the ceremony now that seems odd I when I got married I would rather have had people at the dinner rather than the ceremony like the, the, the evening part is the is almost more important to me you know the big celebration the church part meh so I don't understand why they slighted the Beckhams that way. I think because they got the optics they needed from David Beckham. They got, oh, they're being nice. They're, they're open. They're reaching out, offering an olive branch to David and Victoria. Everyone's going to, they were probably the most high profile guests at the wedding, mm -hmm. you know, alongside the likes of Oprah yeah. uh, and, and some of the other American stars. But we all got them pictured going into the church uh, and saw their amazing outfits. But we didn't realise until a bit later that they were, you know, they were sent on their merry way after that. Yeah. And then when Brooklyn Beckham got married, um, Everyone was invited, but again, Meghan and Harry, not on the guest list. I don't know if they were not invited, if they didn't turn up, I don't know, but they weren't there in the end. And they were talking about um, Harry being at David Beckham's Inter Miami match the other day. There's a video going around of Harry coming down the corridor and Brooklyn Beckham coming yes. down the corridor and Brooklyn kind of stopping and being like, uh-oh, yeah. and not wanting to make any eye contact or, or chat to Harry. That seems like odd behaviour. You see a fellow Brit who you know and you're not like, hey, Harry, it's me, Brooklyn. Strange. Absolutely. No, that video was really telling because, again, Harry will have grown up uh, with Brooklyn. They will have known each other for years. Mm -hmm. And it seemed that Brooklyn looked like he was caught in headlights, didn't he? Like yeah. really throwing himself against the rules, almost like wanting the ground to swallow him up. So if walls could talk, I would be really interested to know what his thinking was. It was almost like he didn't want, he didn't know what to do and he didn't really want Harry to see him. Why do you think Meghan wasn't there? Because we haven't got the excuse anymore of, oh, she's looking after the kids because we've seen it, as I said, at three different high profile concerts, twice for Beyonce, twice. And she watched Beyonce this week with Destiny's Child. And Chris Jenner as well. And Chris Jenner, yeah. But not going to go to watch okay. the, one of our greatest ever footballers perform. Well, I'm going to play the devil's advocate here. Go on. Um, my husband loves football. And maybe if he invited me to go and watch a football game that wasn't down the road, I mean, it was in a different state, wasn't it? They yeah, had to get yeah. on a flight. I might have, you know, checked my diary and said, oh, you know, I probably would go and rather see Beyonce or something. But, you know, I think that for, for David Beckham, it would have been a real show of unity, wouldn't it? If uh, Harry and Meghan had both been there, it would have put stop to all of these rumours. Mm -hmm. So it's telling that, but that uh, she wasn't. But she just might not be a fan of football or soccer, as they say in America. It's cringy. She, she may not be. But Harry didn't seem like he was a fan of Beyonce, <laughs> right? He was there looking miserable as hell. Um, but there are people now saying that maybe Meghan as you alluded to, Megan is at fault for this breakup and she's just a difficult person to be around and she's a bit too controlling. Well, it just seems like she surrounds herself with really imp important people. But I wonder how many of those relationships are genuine. Is she just a really good networker? Is she a very transactional person? I mean, I think she was at uh, the Beyonce gig with uh, one of the top Netflix bosses. We know that they're in bed with Netflix. We know that that's their main income. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting that they were a few uh, chairs away from Kris Jenner because you think, oh, God, we don't need like another kind of Kardashian mm. style family reality show but I, I just wonder how uh, useful Victoria and David are to her these days well you say Netflix then so the, the most recent documentary Invictus Heart of Invictus Harry's project has it hasn't failed but it's not been a success right no. it's, it's not been made the top 10 do you think Harry and Meghan are out and about lots now to try and drum up press and attention so people can be like oh let's check out the documentary yeah they're for sale they're, they are absolutely for sale um they they harped on and on about how awful their life was, how awful their privileged life was within the royal family. Um, so, And they said they're not going to do that anymore, thank God, because I think we could all do with a break from it. Um, and I think now they're sort of thinking, actually, what else have we got to offer? People aren't really interested in the Invictus Games. People aren't really interested in, in our commentaries on you know these great, the, the great people around the world because they haven't got that much insight. The only insight they've got is to the royal family and they've, they've played that ace. What, what, what left do they have? Well, you also said that... Um 
you think Megan's a good social climber. And that may be the case because George Clooney and Amal Clooney were invited to the wedding. When George was asked, so how do you know Megan and Harry? He said, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> right. So they just got invited because they're famous and it's good optics. Well, absolutely. And I also think if you look at them as a couple, he is an, obviously an actor and a super successful businessman with his um, Castro Amiga tequila. Yeah. And she's she's a human rights international lawyer. Mm -hmm. And I actually think that probably Meghan looks at them and think we could be that couple. Yeah. Um, I don't know if Harry's got it in, in him <laughs> to uh, to create any good business deals. He seems to just uh, play. He's an actor, though. And he seems to play the role of uh, hard done by younger son, doesn't he? So I don't know what else he's got. <laughs> um, all right, final question on this. Can they rekindle? Can the Beckhams, which who, to me, the Beckhams are a bigger brand than Harry and Meghan. Can the Beckhams and the, the, the Harry and the Meghan be united again? I think that we've seen that Be you know Beckham seems like a nice guy, doesn't he? You know, yeah. he queued up to see the Queen lying in state. I think he has a lot of respect for the royal family. I think well, he's, he's also after a knighthood, isn't he? So he is after a knighthood. <laughs> so I think that he's always going to have his arms open to Harry and Meghan. I mean, Victoria might feel a bit slighted by how cold uh, Meghan has been towards her, but I actually think that. Um, the, the Beckhams are always going to be slightly in awe of those royal connections. So I don't think we're going to see a fallout as big as Kate and Wills and Harry and Meghan. I mean, that that is something that I don't know if we will ever see uh, reunite. Well, I think if he wants a knighthood, David, he's got to stay with Will and he's going to have to yes. kick Harry to the curb, right? Absolutely. Only only the king can make a difference, <laughs> not, the, uh, not the spare. Well, Hannah, thank you very much. Let us know your thoughts. Comments below. Leave your comments below. Loads of comments. Uh, maybe you agree that that Megan is toxic and uh, coercive. Ooh. Or maybe you think that actually we've just blown all that proportion and they're all best friends behind the scenes. I don't know. Like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.